Miss Carter, have you gotten a chance to reach out to Caitlin? Hey, man. Come on with that. Relax. Have you gotten a chance to reach out to Caitlin? Trinity, have you gotten a chance? The basketball world wants to know if you've gotten a chance to reach out to her. What we are seeing, according to multiple members of the Chicago Sky, is an edited video that makes the players come off as soft and the man behind the camera is innocent. Let's take a step back for a moment. The big hoopla for the last, <laughs> what's felt like eternity, was over the skies, Kennedy Carter intentionally bumping into the Indiana Fevers, Caitlin Clark, the ex-Iowa standout, will be down to the floor, but be a-okay, though many have taken exception. The Chicago Sun-Times' Annie Custable would write that the man who many wrongfully associated with being a reporter or journalist, what have you, targeted the team prior to them entering the hotel. He was not a guest and went after Carter along with her teammates. The Tribune's Julie Poe would add in her write-up, ex-user Brandon Todd DC posted a video of himself attempting to ask Carter if she had reached out to fever guard Clarks in Saturday's game against the Sky. In the video, a Sky security guard quickly intercepted him and blocked his camera view of Carter. Isabel Harrison, a pro since 2016, would take to Twitter and type, Wow, thank God for security. My teammate being harassed at our hotel is insane. Couldn't even step off the bus. As Constable noted, the Sky do have bodyguards traveling with them and accompanying them everywhere they go. Their general manager would tell the outlet, Police were thankfully not called, and security handled it. Michaela Oyenwede, a former UCLA Bruin, the number six overall pick in the 2021 WNBA Draft and Rookie of the Year, saw all this go down and tweeted, Interesting how the video posted was edited and doesn't include when he harassed our staff while calling us ghetto bees and saying women's sports isn't blank. We are not about to normalize things like that. LSU standout and Sky rookie Angel Reese also weighed in. Finding out our team's hotel to pull with a camera as we get off the bus and put it in my teammate's face and harass her is nasty work. This really is out of control and needs to stop. Brianna Turner, a former national champion at Notre Dame, who was in her first year with the Sky, put out a must-read thread, which we will go through right now. I wasn't present for the interaction from earlier, but what occurred is not acceptable. Didn't realize that when we said grow the game, that would be interpreted as harassing players at hotels. You are free to have your own opinion, but consider if this happened to someone you know. Yes, we thankfully travel with security, but the absurd headlines recently has certainly created an unstable environment for our safety. I've been called every racial slur imaginable lately, and my teammates have had it even worse. No, I will not accept racism as part of the game. No, I'm not sensitive. And no, I won't simply ignore the ignorant takes I've seen. The majority of you commenting could care less about the success of the WNBA and are only concerned with division. It's troubling to even speak out on because I know half the responses will be filled with slurs and making excuses for unacceptable behavior. I know we all have different values and outlooks, but the discourse as of late is disingenuous to say the least. Also, I implore the people that will inevitably respond with excuses or slurs to be more creative. What likely has not helped the cause in the slightest is a sitting congressman who is MAGA named Jim Banks, who for the record, objected to the results of the 2020 United States election, would write a letter, and I'm going to show you that letter. And he wrote it and sent it to the WNBA and Commissioner Kathy Engelbert. Here is what Banks said, and it is bonkers. Dear Commissioner Engelbert, like many Hoosiers, I have watched in admiration as the Indiana Fever have captivated a national audience following their selection of Caitlin Clark as the first overall pick in the 2024 WNBA draft. Here we go. As a father, it has been heartening to see my three young daughters more excited about and inspired by the WNBA than ever before. As you know, Clark has shattered on-court and viewership records for women's basketball. Unfortunately, since joining the WNBA, Clark's exceptionalism has been met with resentment. 
and repeated attacks from fellow players. During the Fever's win over the Chicago Sky on Saturday, Kennedy Carter went out of her way to knock Clark to the floor while neither player had the ball. Further, the excessive attack was visibly cheered on and supported by Carter's teammate, Angel Reese. Indiana is a basketball state. We don't wince at aggressive defense, but this was not an example of playing tough. It was a cheap shot that could have resulted in an injury and should not be tolerated. While the foul was retroactively upgraded to a flagrant, there appears to be no further punishment for Kennedy Carter or to the Chicago Sky organization beyond fines related to a lack of media appearances after the game. Every data point shows when Caitlin Clark plays, more people watch. And what they are seeing right now is a league that refuses to hold hostile players accountable and enforce their own rules of sportsmanship. Let me just say, it is really, really, really rich. And not just rich from the money you take from donors and the legalized bribes that you receive, Mr. Banks, but it is very rich that one like yourself would be very interested about accountability when you don't even do it inside your own damn party. So take that for what you will. He is putting a target on the back of Kennedy Carter. He's putting the easiest of easy targets back on Angel Reese because everybody knows what went down when LSU played Iowa a few years ago and the vitriol that Angel Reese suffered. We even, I'll play the clip, we even saw it in a post-game presser after LSU was bounced out of the NCAA tournament, considering what she deals with. Take a look. I just try to stand strong. Like, I've been through so much. I've seen so much. I've been attacked so many times death threats, I've been sexualized, I've been threatened, I've been so many things, and I've stood strong every single time. And I just try to stand strong for my teammates because I don't want them to see me down and, like, not be there for them. So I just want to always just know, like, I'm still a human. Like, all this has happened since I won the national championship, and I said the other day I haven't had peace since then. And it sucks, and but I still wouldn't change. I wouldn't change anything, and I would still sit here and say, like, I'm unapologetically me. I'm going to always leave that mark and be who I am and stand on that. And hopefully the little girls that look up to me, and hopefully I give them some type of inspiration that, you know, hopefully it's not this hard and all the things that come at you. But keep being who you are. Keep waking up every day. Keep mo- being motivated. Staying who you are. Staying ten toes. Don't back down. And just be confident. But Banks doesn't care about that because he is playing up to his largely predominant white male conservative voter block that went after Angel Reese. And he is signaling to those masses to do it again. This is not a way of protecting women's sports because you're a homer. It's a way of tearing down other women in the process by masquerading as one who champions women. Meanwhile, your party is the one that is eroding female rights. But that's just another story for another day, isn't it? It is quite a double standard. Because I saw Arike Ogunbowale get into it in a recent game against the Aces with Asia Wilson. I didn't see anything there. But once it is Caitlin Clark... There needs to be think pieces. There needs to be radio hosts lambasting her mistreatment. There needs to be politicians writing to the commissioner to protect her more. This dude, Jim Banks, is not only over his skis, but falling on his face. It shows he just started tuning in today. And if one were to watch, let's say, the brawl that Candace Parker had years ago, I believe they were playing Detroit when one of the bad boys was the coaches. He would see how physical the league is. He would take the words and pay heed to the Monica McNutts who have said, yeah, this league is physical. You could get in an elbow. You can get in a hip check. And they're going to let it go for the most part. This isn't necessarily This isn't necessarily what I see as t- 
targeting. I see it as a welcome to the league. You got a lot to learn. And by the way, Diana Taurasi predicted this. But Banks probably doesn't even know who she is. If you can and are willing, please become a paid member here at TYT Sports. And or go to tyt.com slash join. In addition, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Appreciate it. Have a great day.